And so now we're ready to solve simple trigonometric equations. So solving a trigonometric equation means that we're attempting to find the angle that gives a particular value for sine, cosine or tangent. Given what we know about the symmetry in the unit circle, there are infinitely many angles that will give a particular value for sine, cos or tan. For example, we know that cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half. That is, we know that at an angle of 60 degrees in the unit circle, the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle is one half. Now, there are a number of other ways that we could describe this same angle at 60 degrees to give an x-coordinate of a half. And similarly, there is also an angle in the fourth quadrant that will also give an x-coordinate of one half. So we could also say that cos of negative 60 degrees is equal to one half. Similarly, we could say that cos of 300 degrees is equal to one half or cos of 420 degrees is equal to one half. And we could go on and on and on as we continue to lap around the unit circle, adding 360 degrees to each of our solutions. This means that there are infinitely many solutions to the equation cos of x is equal to one half, including x equals 60, negative 60, 300 or 420 degrees, and we could go on. Later we'll look at how to express the solution to a trigonometric equation in a way that describes all of the infinitely many solutions and we call this a general solution. But for now our equations will have a restriction. So we might be looking to solve the equation cos of x equal to 1 half where x is between 0 and 360 degrees. And in this case there are only two solutions, x equals 60 degrees or x equals 300 degrees. Solving a trigonometric equation requires us to put together our knowledge of the unit circle and its symmetries along with the exact values and we do this by asking ourselves three questions. The first is in which quadrants are the solutions? So given that sine or cos or tan is positive or negative, where will our solutions be? And this is going to require knowledge of the symmetries and the cast rule. The second thing we asked oursel ask ourselves is what is what I'm going to refer to as the first quadrant reference angle. So we're looking for an angle between 0 and 90 degrees to which all our solutions are going to be related and this is going to require knowledge of our exact values. The third thing is to do with the domain of the equation. What is the domain? And whilst we're dealing with just simple trigonometric equations, this will be a fairly simple application. Um, or a fairly simple bit of information to use. And once we've got those three bits of information, we put them together in the unit circle, then we've got our solutions. And it's a fairly simple process to find the answers. So we're going to look at a couple of examples and we'll start with some examples just working in degrees and then we'll move into radians once we've got the hang of what we're doing. So we're first of all looking to solve the equation sine of x is equal to negative one half where x is between 0 and 360 degrees. So we've got our equation and we'll always start with a unit circle. I encourage you to draw a unit circle for any trigonometric equation that you're solving. So we're going to then think about our first question, in which quadrants are our solutions? So our equation is sine x equals negative one half, so we're looking at when sine is negative. So um, our solutions must be in the quadrants where sine is negative, so that is when the y coordinate is negative. So in this case, our solutions are going to be in the third and fourth quadrants. Our second question is to do with the first quadrant reference angle and this is going to require the use of our exact values. So what we're looking for here is in this case an angle for which sine is equal to one half. So using our relevant special triangle or simply using the memorization of the table of values, we know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. So our solutions are going to be related to 30 degrees. So we're going to have solutions related to 30 degrees and in the third and fourth quadrants. So we mark those positions in our unit circle, 30 degrees away from the x-axis in the third and fourth quadrants. Next we think about the domain. So in this case our domain is from 0 to 360 degrees. So we're talking about just one simple lap of our unit circle, starting at 0 degrees, moving in an anticlockwise direction around to 360 degrees. And so now we can see where our two solutions lie. We have two solutions in these two positions. And now it's simply a case of working out what these angles are. So the first angle is at a position of 180 degrees plus a further 30 degrees. And the second solution is at 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. So we have our two solutions at 210 degrees and 330 degrees. 
This solution also makes sense graphically. If we think about the graphs of y equals sine x and y equals negative a half, the points where these two graphs intersect are going, is going, are going to give us the solutions to the equation sine x equals negative one half. And we can see that in a um, domain of 0 to 360 degrees, we indeed get only two solutions and those two solutions are 210 degrees and 330 degrees. Our next equation is cos of x equals 1 over root 2 and this time we're looking for solutions where x is between negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees. So we have our equation and we start with our unit circle and we ask ourselves in which quadrants will our solutions be. So cos is equal to positive 1 on root 2 so we're looking for solutions in the quadrants where cos is positive so that is in the first and fourth quadrants. Then we think about the reference angle. Cos is equal to 1 on root 2. So what, which angle, or, or using our exact values, what angle will give us cos equal to 1 on root 2? Um, so using the relevant special triangle or recalling from our table of values, we see that cos of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over root 2. So the solutions are going to be related to 45 degrees and they're going to be in the first and fourth quadrants. So we've identified the position in the unit circle where our solutions will be located. Next we think about the domain and in this case we're looking at a domain from negative 180 degrees around to 180 degrees. So we're looking at um, this particular lap of the unit circle starting at negative 180 degrees moving around through zero and around to 180 degrees. So we can see that within this particular domain we have two solutions at these two positions. So the first solution is at zero minus, uh, sorry, zero plus 45 degrees and the next solution is at zero minus 45 degrees. So we have two solutions at 45 degrees and negative 45 degrees. Again, graphically, thinking about the graph of y equals cos x between negative 180 degrees and positive 180 degrees and where that graph will intersect with the line y equals 1 over root 2, we can see that we get two solutions at negative 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So now we're looking to solve tan of x equal to negative root 3, where x is between 0 and 720 degrees. So we have our equation and the unit circle and we ask ourselves in which quadrants are the solutions going to be. So in this case we're looking at where tan is negative, so we're going to have solutions in the second and fourth quadrants. Then we think about the reference angle and so we're looking for tan of what is equal to root 3. So using our exact values we can see that tan of 60 degrees is equal to root 3. So our solutions will be related to 60 degrees and in the second and fourth quadrants. So we're looking at these two positions in the unit circle. Then we think about our domain which in this case is between 0 and 720 degrees. So we're looking at two full laps of the unit circle. So now we can identify where our solutions are and we can see that there will be four solutions. So the first solution is um, at 180 minus 60 degrees. The next solution is at 360 minus 60 degrees. The next solution is at 540 minus 60 degrees. And the final solution is at 720 minus 60 degrees. And so we can see our four solutions at 120 degrees, 300 degrees, 480 degrees and 660 degrees. Our solution also makes sense graphically thinking about y equals tan x and y equals negative root 3 and we can see that there are four solutions within the domain 0 to 720 degrees. So now moving on to radians we're looking at the equation cos x equals negative root 3 on 2 where x is between 0 and 2 pi radians. So we have our equation and the unit circle and we're looking at the quadrants. So cos is negative, so in this case our solutions will be in the second and third quadrants. And our first quadrant reference angle, so we're looking for cosine of what is equal to root 3 on 2. So using our special triangles we can see that cos of pi on 6 equals root 3 on 2. So our solutions will be related to pi on 6 and in the second and third quadrants, so here. We then think about the domain between 0 and 2 pi, so that's one lap of the unit circle from 0 around through pi and finishing around at 2 pi. And we can then see that we have two solutions in this domain. The first solution 
uh, at the position of pi minus pi on 6 and the second solution at pi plus pi on 6. So using some common denominators, pi is the same as 6 pi on 6. So we have 6 pi on 6 minus pi on 6 and 6 pi on 6 plus pi on 6 giving 5 pi on 6 and 7 pi on 6 for our two solutions. Again, a graphical a look at the graphs confirms our solution. Two solutions in the domain of 0 to 2 pi at 5 pi on 6 and 7 pi on 6. Now we look to solve sine of x equals root 3 on 2 where x is between 0 and 4 pi radians. So we have our equation and our unit circle. We're thinking about the quadrants. So sine is equal to positive root 3 on 2 here. Sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. What is the first quadrant reference angle? So sine is equal to root 3 on 2 and that occurs when the angle is pi on 3. So sine of pi on 3 equals root 3 on 2. So our solutions will be related to pi, um, pi on 3 and in the first and second quadrants. So in these positions. We then think about our domain, which in this case is from 0 to 4 pi. So that's two full laps of the unit circle. Now we can see that we have four solutions in these four positions. So our first solution is at 0 plus pi on 3. Our next solution is at pi minus pi on 3. Then we're round to 2 pi plus pi on 3. And our final solution at 3 pi minus pi on 3. Evaluating those gives pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, 7 pi on 3 and 8 pi on 3. Again, graphically, uh, y equals sine x over the domain 0 to 4 pi when intersected with y equals root 3 on 2 gives four solutions um, as confirmed previously. And the final equation that we'll look at is tan of x equal to 1 where x is between negative pi and pi. So we have our equation and our unit circle. We're thinking about the quadrants. So tan is equal to 1, which is positive. So our solutions will be in the first and third quadrants where tan is positive. Thinking about the reference angle, tan of what equals 1? So using our um, special triangles, we see that tan of pi on 4 is equal to 1. So our solutions will be related to pi on 4 and in the first and third quadrants. Our domain in this case is from negative pi to pi, so we're looking at this lap of the unit circle from negative pi around through zero and back around to pi. And so we can see that we have two solutions in this domain. Our first solution is negative pi plus pi on 4, and our second solution is at zero plus pi on 4. So we have two solutions, negative 3 pi on 4 and pi on 4. And again, a graph will confirm these solutions. Um, the graph of y equals tan x between negative pi and pi intersects with the line y equals 1 in two positions at negative 3 pi on 4 and pi on 4. And so a simple unit circle diagram in which we consider three questions then allows us to establish the solutions to our trigonometric equation.